wake up. That's how it always starts. You find yourself in a four-walled cell, the scent of all your lost dreams hanging in the air. You drag yourself out of bed to find a midget named Clive practicing his golf swing on your lime green dining table. You can tell it's going to be one of those days. You spend the next half hour chasing a cup of coffee around the kitchen. You pack all your preconceptions into a brown leather briefcase and get ready for another day of work. You switch on every appliance in the house. All the water, all the gas. As you walk out the door, you tell yourself, this is not my home. I am never coming back here. You take a shortcut through the cemetery. Drugged by the aroma of so many dying flowers, you begin to lose your grip on what is real. You arrive at work to find everything exactly as you left it. The blood-stained collars, the ridiculous floral ties. You head up to the top floor to find that your boss is now a 300-litre refrigerator with cyclic defrost, a separate freezer compartment and one of those little trays that makes ice in novelty shapes. You hand him your letter of resignation and leave without saying a word. You stop off at the printing lab and make a hundred copies of your face. You put one in the pigeonhole of everyone you ever worked with. You set up all the smoke alarms and make your escape. Then you head down to the docks and buy a ticket on the first boat to Tokyo. And as you stand there, waiting quietly on the pier, you recollect vague memories of a time long past. A time when life was far less complicated and far less fraught with peril. But as you look down at the toxic sea, littered with the corpses of a million poisoned fish, you realize that it must have been a dream.